Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is a turbo talk uh, in the Florentine room, uh, the, talking about USB HID, which we define as uh, uh, hacker interface design. Uh, myself, Richard Rushing, uh, I have Jason Pisani here, um, and Paul Caragatti here. We're from Motorola. Um, and we originally started looking at this, um, and Jason will give you some more information of what kind of triggered uh, this event. But in regards to, we're, USB is pretty much the ultimate interface that's being used today. Uh, the issue is that there's a, we've gone through several iterations of bad things happening. We're just used to, oh, here's a memory stick, plug it in, copy files. Oh, here is the auto run capability, malware issue, U3 issues, and we keep going through this. Um, and it's part of the culture, part of the issues that are there, and now we're starting to see some leveraging of additional sides of this. We've seen a couple of people use this at different levels, uh, and it's the same thing. It's really super easy to exploit, and it gives you pretty much good control of uh, what you're actually trying to do. So I'll turn it over to Jason here, which will talk about how he actually, how we actually came into being on this. So we've got you know a USB device spec that lets us do a lot of really flexible things, and what we've seen is you know obviously used in a lot of different areas. And USB HIDs, any device that wants to talk on the USB bus can you know comply with the HID standard, announce itself, define its data formats, and uh, basically get access to existing drivers you know to some extent without having to load new device drivers onto the endpoint. Um, so I mean this goes across a, you know a giant class of things, cameras, everything else. And what we're starting to see, and, and I guess this is what triggered it for us, is that uh, a financial company had sent me a piece of uh, junk mail, and on my way to the trash bin with it, um, I noticed it had USB contacts on the back. And I thought, hmm, you know, w why would they bother to put metal on the back of a piece of disposable plastic I'm going to put in the trash can? And uh, took a little closer look at it and you know, realized, yeah, it's, okay, it's USB, they mean for me to plug it into my computer. I'm a reasonably smart guy. My machine doesn't do auto run. I've got whitelisting enabled. Nothing is going to run on my computer. Maybe I get a free, you know, free 64, you know, meg memory card out of it. You know, memory so cheap now. I plug it in, and you know, little did I know, it's going to start to uh, bring up a web page on my computer. You know, launches an intermediate page, and then eventually lands me at the at the financial site. Um, but I had to do nothing. Windows initial, you know, saw the device, initialized it as a keyboard. And uh, you know, took an input stream from it, and it'd do you know, it can do whatever it wants. Um, so it took no effort, no no brains. I'm not really sure why they felt the need to go to this much you know expense to get me to you know land on a 24 character URL at their website. So I guess what we're looking at this is this is a bypass, an intentional bypass of controls to use this type of device versus anything else, um, because it bypasses all those auto run controls that we've worked so hard to get disabled in our enterprises. So this is, I think, you know, for us, this is the next thing we're going to have to tackle. I don't know if Paul wants to go to the next piece here. Okay. So after Jason's epiphany and, uh, and received via snail junk mail, um, what did we decide to do? So we wanted to try to put this in some sort of proof of concept, right, to see what, what, what could we do with this. Um, we had a limited amount of time. Um, so we came up with a few things just again as a proof of concept just to show you what the potential here uh, and the ability of being able to bypass some of the interactive control features within the operating system. So uh, what we were able to do is identify or find a, um, a uh, USB microcontroller, programmable read-write microcontroller uh, to be able to, to program to emulate this type of uh, a human interface device. Uh, there's a couple of different um, compilation uh, software programs you can use uh, WinAVR. We actually used uh, Arduino, um, which is uh, very, very similar to a, to a C programming interface, uh, object-oriented programming interface, uh, because, and it is, and this, the microcontroller that we used just so happened to support uh, the Arduino software natively. So it was super, super easy. Um, the, the microcontroller comes with free loader software. Uh, I, think the, I think the chip costs like 20 bucks. Um, we got it in the mail within a couple days and, you know, within about 30 minutes. Um, I mean, so I'm not a programmer, I'm a security professional by, uh, by nature here and I haven't programmed C in nine and a half years. So we sat down and uh, with literally within 20 minutes we were able to get this working. So uh, 
what we're going to try to do is demo it for you. It's super quick. It's not very, uh, not very fancy, unfortunately. We're hoping to get something a little more interactive. Um, but I think you'll get the point of the potential danger that this is going to this is going to cause. Um, so what we're able to do, and I'll show you the source in a second here, um, is just simply program the controller to be able to. Um, uh, we 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 emulated exactly the uh, the, the device that uh, Jason was sent in the mail. Uh, we also thought, well, hey, what's what's some of the other easy, super easy exploits that we might be able to run as a result of this. Um, and we tr and we're able to uh, you know open a command line natively without any user input whatsoever. Um, and uh, mount, a, mount a potentially malicious network share. Um, ultimately, what we're trying to do is make the, po make the impossible possible here, right? So we've already completely disabled auto run, so we're completely fine, right? We've got app whitelisting, we've got, um, you know, all the other different types of security control programs on the OS, we're fine. Not the case, right? Uh, the other key point in here that we actually don't have in the presentation is this is cross-platform. Right, so auto run some is something that's specific to to Windows. You know, and other OSs have different variants, obviously. Um, but this is this is standard HID, right? So this is this is Windows, Linux, Mac across the board. Um, and of course, right, making the box do what you want, priceless across. Um, real quick before we get into the demo, this is the source. Again, very short. It's like you know, 50 lines or so. Um, uh, for your pleasure, if you'd like to take a look at it, again, what we're trying to do is just implement a proof of concept, show you the potential here, right? This obviously is in, in the end all be all what we're going to show you, but um, I think you get the point um, of the potential danger that this might have. So uh, the first demo I'll show you, um, the, uh, the device itself will, inst will if it, uh, obviously if it's the first install, it will load the driver. We've got a 30 second wait. Uh, for the HID driver to finish installing. Uh, it'll then simply emulate a Windows hotkey um, uh, input, open up a command prompt, and then uh, attempt to mount a share outside of the internal network. So this is what it looks like. Here's the chip, right? Standard mini USB input. Let's see. There you go. I drew the short straw. So hopefully the demo demons don't get me here, right? So it's plugged in. Um, we might have actually plugged it into this machine before, so obviously the, you're not going to see the, uh, the, the pop-up that Windows would normally show you. Uh, it's waiting 30 seconds right now, so hopefully within 30 seconds we'll see it pop up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, feel free to talk amongst yourselves. I think, Paul, I think it's the way you're holding it. Oh, is it? Sorry. <laughs> How's that? There we go. So there's your command prompt. And then it should shift focus back to the original window, which it did, but didn't work the way I wanted it to. But So um, obviously, again, nothing, nothing major frills, nothing majorly fancy here. Um, but the point is, is what we were able to do is just simply by installing this, auto run is completely disabled. It's not executing any, um, any PE. It's simply just emulating keyboard, human interface device keystrokes in, into the system. So, you know, with a little, uh, little more intelligent code, uh, something to be able to detect the, the OS, you know, whether or not it's XP or if it's Vista or 7 for Windows, if it's got UAC running, you know, if, if UAC pops up, there's no reason I couldn't, if I want to run in a, a, you know, an, an advanced privilege command, I could just simply click through the yes right on the UAC. Um, the key here is being able to do this quick. Um, you know, so the user is completely unaware of anything happening and, you know, you know, the majority of them, at least in my family, would definitely <laughs> fall into that category. Um, so uh, one other point I did forget to mention is within the source you'll see I did put a bunch of sleeps in here to make this run a little slower just so for the purposes of the demo so that you could actually see the windows popping up. But you can go as fast as the input um, would expect, right? So, um, you know, anticipate any, any actual user interaction that's going to be changing what you're anticipating on the screen. This could go, you know, within, um, this could actually all happen within, uh, between two or three seconds without the user being aware. So, that's it. Oh, yeah, let's do the other one. So I'm gonna unplug this one. And plug in this one. Ooh, yeah, I know. You know, I realized there's an LED on this. We should have had it blink or something. I 
just to keep you guys, you know, it's after the ice cream social, it's, sugar you guys are sugar high, yeah, you're coming down off that, so. Uh, again, waiting for 30 seconds, uh, just, uh, this is completely uh, 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 programmable, it's just something that we put in so that if it was the device's first time installing, we would wait for Windows to load the HID driver. Maybe. There we go. And of course we turned wireless off because we're at Black Hat, so uh, that's not going to work. And it changed focus, if you notice, really quick. So um, what happened was, is it loaded IE, tried to go do evil URL. Again, you could point this directly to a, to a file on a web server, click through the accept yes to download, um, and then it automatically changed focus, so it went right back to the, to the window I was looking at. So again, you blink for a couple seconds. Keep in mind I slowed this down specifically for this demo, so if the user blinks for a couple seconds, drops a quarter on the floor, they're gonna miss that. So, I think that's it. Richard, you're up. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. So, um, and we've, we've looked at different things on this. So you can, again, being in a keyboard design, you can use hotkeys to functionally make your screen go external. So all of a sudden, the screen would go black, looks what happens, it's actually going to the external monitor, come back online, you're back on the other side. So all sorts of different ways to hide in the background and do other functions. Um, so what can you do um, on this side of it? Um, and this is where it gets some of the areas. We've looked at the web page download, malware is always fun. You can even force log on. Uh, so if they're cached in credentials or anything else, you can do a look at the capture of that in the areas. Uh, again, click through anything, really anything you really are desired to want in this area. Um, it's also one of these items that is a corporate nightmare, as I refer to it as, that if it works on one machine in an organization, it's probably going to work on every single machine in the organization. Uh, and once you have one capability, you can go for that. You can also create VNC type like access very easily. So you can actually get a shell running somewhere in the background, uh, missing the focus on that. Um, copy files too from shares, uh, backup things over the internet. Um, anything that you want to eliminate, uh, emulate on the keyboard, you can actually do. Um, it's really limited by just what your, your imagination actually sits down with. It's all keyboard shortcuts. And again, how to hide things. Uh, sizing windows, everything else is, is part of the issue, so in minimization and everything else. So it, it's always something that we really left with, well, what can you actually do? And then we start looking at, okay, what's the future scape of this? What can you actually do um, to get into some of the areas? And one of the key things that came into it as a, as a, as a known issue in the past, if you can, we can minimize some things here. And do like I want to do is that screensavers. I know it's really silly, but it goes back to the same kind of idea. Once somebody has physical access to your device, game over. It's been that way for a very long time. Oh yeah, I can boot with a CD, I get control of anything else, it's, it's pretty much on the same thing. And screensavers have this wonderful feature, which is accessibility options. If I can get this. So screensaver is enabled and I can turn on certain accessibility options. Do you want to enable high contrast or not? Okay, wait, it's screensaver. You should not do anything I don't want to do. And accessibility options are designed to, to bypass in some of those levels, which allow you access to certain things to turn on and not turn on. So this is one of the things that you basically say, well, if it's safe and the same goes for auto run, you're not in those, those specifics of that because you can actually make changes and do other things. So this is where we start getting into the exploit side of the world. And you can start looking at the capabilities that are out there. Uh, I view it as the ultimate version of a switchblade. For those who don't know, switchblades use a USB self-bootable, uh, does malicious things. These are even better because the machine can actually be on. And you can do anything that you want to with the controls. Again, these are interface design things. So it's a mouse, it's an interface, you can have multiple mice, which could, inserting this, 